Hey everyone, welcome back to Web Squadron. We're going to be looking at what happens when you pass over a website that you've built to a client, or maybe even to someone you know, and you want to be a little bit careful with what they can and cannot do with Elementor. We're going to be looking at that right now. By the way, I'm Imran Sadiq, if you didn't know, I'm from Web Squadron, and you know, please do subscribe and like, and please do follow us uh, on many of our social media platforms that you can see in the description. We're here to help you understand Elemental, how to get the best out of it, and how to make it work for you, your business, your agency, and your customers as well. Okay, so let's break it down exactly what we're covering here. If you've built a website that is for you, you'll be the administrator and you're gonna to wanna to keep all the power and all the God rights that go with it. Of course you are. You're gonna to want to be able to do whatever you want. Okay, cool. So no changes there, you're the administrator. If however, you are handing a website fully over to a client or a friend or someone, and you're now gonna have nothing to do with it, okay, and they don't want you to have anything to do with it either, you're most likely gonna pass administrator rights over to them. And that's dead easy to do. So if they've already been set up on the website as a user or whatever, you would just go in, edit them, okay, go over to their role, click edit, and you would change them from administrator, well, you would change them from a subscriber or an author or an editor to administrator, okay? So they now have full rights. But what if you are the administrator, okay? So you're still gonna be looking after the website because there's a maintenance package or something like that, but your customer wants to have a form of access as well because they want the ability to change images, change text, um, modify things like that. But you as in the administrator or the creator of the website, you're a little bit concerned and they are a little bit concerned as well. They don't want to break their website. You don't want them to break it. And so there's got to be a little bit of level of control here. It is dead easy to do. Now I want to make clear, there are more advanced things that we could do. There's advanced custom fields. There are ways that you could literally lock down the website, whitelist it, literally remove any aspects of WordPress and Elementor. And they offer very, very much advanced. And even I'm just trying to get my head around, what's the simplest way to explain that? So I'm not covering that. I'm just covering Elementor user roles, okay? Elementor user roles. It, there's no extra plugins required. It's all there for you. You just have to understand what you gotta do. So let me give you an example of two roles we have here. We have me at the moment, and I'm set up as the administrator for this website, which means I can add users, edit users, do what I want, okay? Anything I wanna do with Elementor. So we've gone into the user role for editor or editor. And, the, and this person who's gonna be a client or a customer, we are gonna give them access to the back end of WordPress, but there is a little bit of a limitation, okay? They are gonna have access to be an editor. This means that they can go in, okay, and have rights to do a lot of things on the website, okay? They can mess around with pages, okay? They can literally move things around. What they can't do is add or remove a plugin, okay? This is basic WordPress administration or basically WordPress user roles, okay? Nothing scientific going on here at the moment. But if we go to editor, okay, over here, like I've just said, they can still have the ability to mess around with Elemental. And we wanna lock that down just a little bit. So if we then go to Elemental, okay, right there, right there, okay, you will see the function for role manager. You can't miss it, it's there, it's, it's available for you. You go into role manager, and here's now where, for the different roles that you have on your system, I have tutor and LP instructor, because I also use this website for testing out some LMS plugins and abilities to do things. This is where you're gonna have all of your user roles, okay? Administrator is missing from here, why? Because administrator has the rights to do everything, so you don't need to mess around with that. You don't want to either, you wanna leave that as it is. Now the editor, if I go in here, I can decide, is this person who logs in gonna have access to the editor with Elementor? So are they gonna be able to mess around with things or is it just they're allowed to do some stuff but not touch the Elemental side? Or am I gonna say, you can go in, you can modify your images, you can modify your text, but that's about it. So I give them access to edit content only. And I can do this for all of these if I so wish. I'm not gonna worry too much yet. So let's save that change. Let's now log out. So I've now gone in, I've logged in as the editor. And you can clearly see I now have lost loads of things on the right-hand side or the left-hand side even. And that is because 
with WordPress, you wouldn't have access to loads of these anyway when you're an editor. So I can't remove or add plugins. Yeah, pretty simple so far. Let's now go over to pages. And now we have our pages and I can still see edit with Elementor. Let's now go into the, let's go to the home page. So edit with Elementor. So now we're gonna go in, okay? And here's when it's gonna become really obvious what the user role does. Look over here, I'm gonna click on this text. I wanna change that text to now say something else. I can change it here or even on the page. The light bulbs are the future, are they? You know, you know, I can change things around like that. I can change the, the whether it's a H1 or a H2, I can even mess around with the alignment a little bit, okay? So they have a little bit of control or the ability to mess around with the content, but that's it. The styling tab is gone. The advanced tab is gone, okay? The most they can do is change the HTML tag. Uh, they can if they want do stuff like this, but this is gonna make very little difference because your styling's been done in your styling tab. They can't move up the padding or the margins. The most they can do is change the text. And that's exactly what we wanted. Now, if we go over to say this button over here, again, the same thing. They can change the link. So you might go, mm, do I really want to do that? But they can change the link, they can change the text. They can change the alignment. They can change the icon spacing if there was one, which there isn't, they can add an icon. But again, no styling, no advanced. Let's now scroll down over here to this icon. They can change the image for this logo, okay? They can align it, they can put a link in. They can basically look, they can change the image, okay? But that's about the best they're gonna be able to do with it. And I don't need to, I don't think I need to go down every single one here, but look, we have the content text editor here. You can do the text edit. We have an image over here. You can change the image as well, okay? Um, we have a blog post over here. Okay, so this is where I was bringing over, offsetting and bringing over one blog post, okay? I can go in. They can change the look of it, okay? So they can change it as a classic or cards or full content, whatever. They can also change the queries. They do have a little bit of extra control. However, the most they can do is change what comes through. What they can't do is do the styling massively, other than the blog post, there's a little bit of styling there. And they can't mess around with margins and paddings, which is where when someone does that, and then they go, oh, it doesn't look good on the mobile. Oh, it looks really bad on the desktop. That's probably because they messed around a little bit with stuff like that. So you're a little bit protected from that side of things. So in a nutshell, I mean, look, um, let me just go to this section here. This is now the, the section I'm in with the light bulb and I can change, you know, the, uh, the width of it. So they could still do that. But what they can't do is change the background image. So I've set it as a light bulb. I'm going to have to be the one that sets the background image. So just understand that you don't have full ability to change images, except if it's an image or, you know, as an image. But if anything that is set as a column background or a section background, they're not going to have that ability. So I don't want to prolong going into all of this too much. I just wanted to get across really, really simply elemental user roles. OK, and like I said, it is not difficult. OK. But bear in mind, okay, that if you have gone in as an editor or anything like that, you will not have the ability to go into Elementor, set the user roles, regenerate CSS, any of those things, roll back, you know, whatever, update plugins, you can't do any of that. And that's where the administrator comes in. So look, I know this was the most unexciting video I've probably ever done, but I hope it made sense to anyone out there who hasn't really explored or thought about this when they're handing over to clients. I hope you like, I hope you subscribe, I hope you follow us, please do, and I'll see you soon.